Spinning records ain't paying the bills around here. I get paid. Fifty dollars, Andre. It's a start. We were just some kids from Compton having some fun in the studio. We never thought that it would be big. You got them hard rhymes? You know, that's all I do. Our whole message at that time was just putting Compton on the map. We were rapped by what was going on in the hood because it was dirty. Where you think you're going? I was trying to get home. That's my son! You need to get back in the house or I will ruin your night. You ain't gotta talk to my moms like that. We took the music and it became our weapon. If you had to change, to change the situation, would you take it? You gotta stand up. NWA tapped into the rebel in all of us. I got a cold last beat. That hardcore reality rap. So what you talking about doing? Cruising down the street in my 6 four. Hey, that was dope, eh? No censor, no filters, no nothing. They want NWA? Let's give them NWA. People are scared of you guys. You have a unique voice. The world needs to hear it. Your songs, they glamorize gangs and drugs. Our art is a reflection of our reality. What you see when you go outside your door? I know what I see. You guys supposed to be somewhere? These are artists. Rap is not an art. You yeah. cannot come down here and harass my clients because of what they look like. We ain't thugs. We artists. We look in the chronicle what we grew up going through. They shed light on things that people needed to know. This isn't the Crips and Bloods. This is a threat from the federal government. Speak a little truth and people lose their mind. We were just guys from the hood that made something incredible happen. Yo, Trent. What up? I got something to say. How you go from selling rocks in a dope house to eating dinner in a white house? <laughs> Sometimes, uh, you know, God a sacrifice somebody like Easy E to teach more people or or uh, another generation what it is. Now through this movie, he's gonna teach again. Man, this is a great movie. Thank I, you. I know it's been like. You guys, baby, forever. But I mean, even for the fans, like we've we've knew that this was coming out, and it's, it feels good to just finally see it on screen and see hip hop, and and the rap business and all that stuff that went on told in this type type of fashion. My first question, to you guys, though, there's been biopics done on living people like Ray, like like Stephen Hawkins and Mark Zuckerberg. But how does it feel to be a living man and see yourself recreated on screen? especially for you to see a son do it. I mean, it feels great just to be a part of it, to be able to have it in our own hands and to, you know, make sure that we do it justice. Um, so that's that's fun as a filmmaker to be able to kind of have your own destiny in your own hands. As a father, you know, just seeing your son step up, you know, that's something that I think everybody can relate to. You know, when you, when you, set the tone and your, and your son steps up and and you know does what he's supposed to do and handles his business and um he did a great job and i think he got a he got a, a nice career ahead of him if he if he stay focused so I'm, I'm proud in a thousand different ways yeah how about you um i mean i'm just you know just proud of the movie period I mean the, the way our our, um, our life came you know our story came to life you know and somebody picked it up and interested and then backed it up yeah you know, so it's it, it, it's a great story you know but it's like universal and all everything made it just even bigger yeah so it's just something different now I know this project's been kind of in the mix for like 15 years or so and sadly, over that time, there's been a lot of violence uh, done on, on behalf of police against black people and everything. But the timing of this picture and the, the message of fuck the police when everybody's kind of feeling a certain way about policing in America, do you, do you think that timing just kind of meshed perfectly to kind of bring what you guys were feeling in 91, 95 to life in 2015? Well, the thing is, nothing has changed and nothing has stopped. 
you know so uh i think we are you know in a time where you know we got a black president things look like they're moving forward but you know when you really look at the day-to-day -day neighborhood what's going on nothing has changed you know so uh unfortunately it is timely that this movie is coming out yeah. but if this movie came out two years ago or you know unfortunately maybe two years from now it's still gonna feel timely until we hold people accountable hold the police accountable for what they're doing then a movie like this is always going to be relevant and that's that's the problem that's yeah. what we need to solve one of the great parts of this story in the script is is the story of Eazy -E, which got kind of lost in history of hip-hop moving on and everything but you know uh what did it, it mean everybody talks about magic and how, how him being diagnosed with AIDS was such a big deal. What did it mean for uh, hip hop to contract and die from AIDS and to see like the community have to react to that? Just let us know that, you know, we're all part of the same family. We all part of the same community. Doesn't matter what you do, everybody can be affected. Uh, and it just lets us know that we're all connected. And, you know, we, we put these titles on each other that creates boundaries, but at the end of the day, we are people, and um, we all gotta figure out how to live with each other. So, you know, it, to me, it just made it real. You know, and, and it, it's always a moment because AIDS is still ravishing our community, and we still have to protect ourselves a lot better. Last thing, last Friday, I mean, it's <laughs> Gary. <laughs> we get a word on last Friday. That's something, something uh, else I've been holding out for. I, I ain't really worried about Friday right now. I'm just worried about straight out of comp. That's what's up. <laughs> All right, brothers.